You've now lost five out of your last six games. Bo didn't lose five games in five years in the 70s. And everyone's saying the wheels are coming off, Bo's lost it, and if Bo ain't happy, ain't nobody happy. So there they are in the screening room on Sunday going over all the bad plays, and Bo is not happy. Bob Thornblade says, as assistant coach, who'd been a player of his in the early 70s, he says, Bo, we got a problem in this team. And Bo's got his reading glasses on. And he looks up from all the bad stats very slowly. And he says, Coach Thornblade, we have currently lost five out of our last six intercollegiate football contests. I appreciate your astute analysis. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I read the paper too, pal. <laughs> Things are not going well. I get it. And Thornblade says, no, it's worse than that. And Bo says, well, what do you mean? So we got guys on this team saying that practices are too long, we hit too much, and the coaching staff is too tough. And Bo says, you're right. That really is a problem. Who's saying this? And that's when Thornblade gulps, because he knows this is not going to be good news. He says, well, Canavino, for one. Bang! My captain? Yes, your captain. You have five minutes to get that man in my office. So Canavino shows up, a big swashbuckling Italian-American guy, all Big Ten linebacker, and he hates Bo, too, at this point, and he is ready for the showdown. He's sick of the yelling, sick of the shouting, and boom, here we're going to go, mano a mano, and see who's got what. So sit down. Canavino sits down. He says, I understand, Mr. Canavino. We've got guys in this team saying the practices are too long, we hit too much, and the coaching staff is too tough. Is that accurate? <laughs> Canavino's got his elbow crooked in the chair like this. He's glaring right back at Bo. He says, yeah, it is. Furthermore, Mr. Canavino, I understand that you're one of the guys saying that. Is that accurate? Yeah, that's true, too. Last thing he said all day. Bo puts two fists, big old meaty fists, right in his desk, stands up. Bam! Mr. Canavino, let me tell you something. Your daddy was an All-American at Ohio State, and Woody Hayes did not so much as visit your high school. Didn't want you. We gave you a full ride here at Michigan. Coaching staff here has made you an All-Big Ten linebacker, and you've got the nerve, the gall, to tell me that we hit too much, practices are too long, and your coaching staff is too tough. Canavino, I want you to stand up for all those great Michigan men who came before you, the Deerduffs, the Lydas, the McKenzies, and tell them we hit too much. Tell them your practices are too long. Tell them your coaching staff is too tough. And Andy, do you know what they're going to tell you? They're going to tell you, grow up. Grow up and be a man. We got one problem this team, Canavino, and it's you. And until you change your attitude, we're going to go nowhere, and it's all going to be your fault. There was great clarity to Bo's message. <laughs> no one ever walked out of Bo's office saying, what the hell do you mean by that exactly? Man, that guy's hard to read. <laughs> Bam. Canavino got the message. His elbow is off the table. His hands are in his lap, shaking. Tears are coming down the tough guy's face. Things have changed quite a bit in the last 60 seconds. He leaves that room shaking like a leaf. The coaching staff hears the whole thing, and they're scared witless because you just called out your captain. You're ready for a mutiny. The whole thing is about to erupt. Bo, for the first time, is about to lose one of his teams. And these guys come running around to Bo's office, very concerned. Jerry Hanlon leads the pack, and he says, and Bo's back in his chair by now. The steam's coming off. He spent himself, and Jerry says, wow, Bo, that was really something. And Bo thinks about that, and he says, yes, it was. <laughs> And then Hanlon says, well, what do you think Canavino's going to do next? And Bo ponders that, and he says, you know, Jerry, I really can't tell you that. But I can tell you one thing. I feel a hell of a lot better. <laughs> what happens next? Bo is on fire. They expected that. What they didn't expect is Canavino is worse. Canavino's all over his defensive guys, making them do sit-ups and push-ups and laps and do it again. And finally, one guy says, one of his friends says, man, Canavino, what got into you? You used to be cool, man. And Canavino says, you know, I've done a lot of thinking last night, and it occurs to me I am the captain of this defense. I no longer care if you guys like me. I no longer care if you guys think I'm popular. I only care about one thing from now on. I am not going back to that damn office. <laughs> What happens next? They rattle off nine straight victories, undefeated in the Big Ten, including Bo's first Rose Bowl victory in about six tries, 23 to six. 
More impressive, the last 24 quarters of that season, almost half the year, no one crosses Michigan's goal line. Not one touchdown against. And here's a lesson. If you've got a problem with someone, talk to the person you have the problem with and no one else. And if you're not willing to do that, you have to drop it. Once you've done that, the problem is theirs, not yours. If they solve the problem, give them the credit, not you. And finally, after all is said and done, you can hold no grudges. You ask Bo, his best defense of all time. He would never say 1980 or my defense. He always says Canavino's defense. You ask him, who's your best captain of all time? And no coach will ever touch this. And Bo will say in a heartbeat, easy, Andy Canavino. Not only was he the best captain, I ever had. He was the best coach I ever had. They were following him, not me, by the end of that year. He was the best of all time. And Canavino and Bo were as thick as thieves to the day Bo died. And no one took it harder than Canavino.